with robots. The future is here, but as William Gibson says, it's just not evenly distributed yet. And as I say, we don't always recognize the future when we see it. How do we recognize robots? We usually look for humanoids, something with head, arms, legs, optional glowing red eyes, super weapons, and evil intent to destroy humanity. But world domination aside, we still look for humanoids. The most basic robot is part human, the simple robot arm. But technically, a robot is just a machine that senses, thinks, and acts. According to the International Standards Organization, a robot is an actuated mechanism able to be programmed in two or more axes, moving within its environment with a degree of autonomy to perform its intended tasks. So I ask you, how many robots do you see here? Four, six, eight, or is it one big robot? And what about the car? Elon Musk called the Tesla S a computer in the shape of a car. I call it a robot. It's a machine that senses, thinks, and acts. It's an actuated mechanism able to be programmed in two or more axes. It moves within its environment with a degree of autonomy performing its intended tasks. And that's even before you add auto park and lane changing. It's not just Tesla. Every new car is a robot. But we usually just call them cars. And we usually just call this a washing machine, although it soon may be a washing, drying, and folding machine. Is it a robot? Well, it's hard for us to tell if the humanoid parts are hidden inside a box. We're humans, and we see the world through human eyes. And we like to divide the world up into humans and things. But robots change everything. And as we build robots, we're actually reshaping what it means to be human. I call this a technologically blended reality. And what does it mean when our devices look like people? What does it mean when our devices don't? What does it mean when we're using so many different devices to communicate with other people? The characteristics of a technologically blended reality, it's asynchronous, it's mediated, and it's indirect. We use our technologies to communicate with people across distance, across time, and at an expanded scale. And in the process, we're creating a much larger and richer world. And this is nothing new. Civilization is the story of technology taming space and time. Since the invention of writing, we've been able to communicate with other people at a distance and at different times and at scale. And we expanded that ability with the printing press and other tools of reproduction like photography. And as we've changed our communication methods, we've changed the world. Consider the impact the printing press had. Gods and empires fell. In the last 200 years, we've added many more communication technologies, telegram, telephone, radio, and television. But one thing that all of these communication methods have had in common is that we could still see who was pulling the strings. We could connect the context and the content. We could hold people accountable. We could connect the action and the intent. But right now, we're in the middle of an explosion of communication and information. We've gone wireless and unplugged. We're live streaming our lives. We're data mining the world. We can search for anything anywhere. More than half the world now has a mobile phone. And these are becoming smart and smarter phones. Laws of physics aside, this does change our reality, because we're social beings. And we experience the world through our communications. The heart of our reality is social. And yet, at the same time, we seem to be shrinking into our own little reality bubble. Even when we are physically with other people, we are not sharing the same experiences. 
even when we are communicating with other people. We are no longer sure who we are communicating with. Ray Kurzweil predicts that in the future, we will spend most of our lives communicating with machines, not people. The future's already here, though. It's just not evenly distributed yet. How do we have this technologically blended reality? How do we recognize it? It's when technology becomes an extension of ourselves. It's when technology becomes a proxy for other people. And it's also when technology can have its very own unique identity, like a robot. Or like a robot phone. Sharp's new Robohon is the epitome of a blended reality device. It is an extension of ourselves. It's a proxy for other people. And it has its own unique identity. Our categories of you, me, and it are more fluid than we think. And the it is starting to blend you and me together. Heidegger first talked about technology as being an extension of our identity when he described the hammer. It is present when we look at it and think about it, but it becomes invisible when the builder is building, not hammering. When the focus is on the task and not the tool, the hammer has become ready at hand and is simply an extension of our intent to act in the world. And our technology extensions can also augment our senses. The lady with feathers in her hat, as Merleau-Ponty described, has enhanced spatial awareness. She can feel the walls and the doors around her, just like whiskers on a cat. We're adding technological whiskers to our world, and they become invisible extensions of ourselves. The technology also becomes invisible when it's extending other people. Do you remember the Sheldon bot from Big Bang Theory? Well, in the audience, we were looking at the Sheldon bot, but Leonard and Sheldon were simply interacting, communicating with each other. Telepresence robots offer us the illusion of real presence, a transparency. In fact, suitable technologies don't even like to call Beam a robot because they want people to focus on the experience and not the technology. But there are other times when we like to focus on the robot, when the robot is doing the important task, when the face becomes important. And it's important for us to realize that anything with a screen, in fact, anything with speakers and connectivity, becomes a gateway for many other people and can offer multiple levels of interaction. Welcome to Life with Robots. This blended reality is already rolling out. We have robots that look like things, we have robots that look like robots, and we have robots that look like people. And you'll get to meet Pepper tomorrow on the machine stage. And people really enjoy meeting Relay, Savvy Oaks Hotel Robot Butler. Relay has been rolled out now in four hotel chains in California. You can communicate with it, although it's more like R2-D2 than C-3PO. It's a functional robot. It's performing a simple service. It's delivering small items to guest rooms when the front desk staff are busy. And people do enjoy the social interaction with the robot, but it turns out that what they enjoy most is not having to have a social interaction with another person at a time when they're not feeling social, when you're feeling tired, vulnerable, it's late at night, you're in your pajamas. And this is when the robot is becoming an extension of your wishes. Mabu from Catalia Health is being an extension of your doctor or your primary care physician, helping you manage a treatment regime in your house. But it's not a direct conversation with your doctor. The doctor is getting the data. Did you take the pill? Are you having a problem? You're engaging in a conversation with Mabu's artificial intelligence. And you can leave Mabu the robot at home and still carry Mabu the robot app around with you wherever you go. Fellow robots Oshbot is taking this to a whole new level. 
Oshbot is a hardware store retail assistant. When you enter the store, you can ask the robot for directions, and the robot will autonomously navigate, guide you to where you need to go in the store. Or you could just look at the map and ignore the robot. You can also engage the robot in helping you to identify parts and find out where they are. Now, robots are really good at remembering tens of thousands of SKUs. But people are really good at solving harder problems and understanding contexts, helping you find out what is the right glue to use with that nail if you're doing a roof, or what color paint will complement something else. The robot can initiate a video call with a store expert anywhere so that you can have a conversation with the robot and a person at the same time. And as a customer, this is just a good shopping experience. But as a store associate, this can change everything. Hardware stores are huge, and you spend all of your time walking around trying to answer questions that you don't have the answer to, because there are many areas of expertise involved. Now you have the opportunity to answer the questions that you can answer, to solve the problems that you enjoy solving. We're augmenting our reality with robots. Our new blended reality, robots are an extension of ourselves. Robots are proxies or avatars for other people. And robots have their own alien identity. As a child, I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to go into space to explore the universe and to meet aliens. And it turns out the aliens are already here. And they're helping us understand what it means to be human. We're using robotics in many research areas, from neuroscience to biomechanics to psychology, to gain a better understanding of what being human is. And at the same time, being human is changing. Technology allows us to build much larger, richer worlds. But it also allows us to shrink into our own little reality bubble. But it's our choice. Thank you.